Hello and welcome to exam revision and today's video is going to be about supply and demand and in particular we're going to look at what's called the law of demand. So our learning intentions for today are that we are going to describe different assumptions that economists have about consumers. We're going to differentiate to be able to tell the difference between supply and demand. We're going to understand what is meant by the, the law of demand and then we're going to explain what a demand curve is and we're going to understand the impacts of shifts in a demand curve. Okay, so before we move on with this topic, uh, there's a couple of assumptions that we need to understand that economists make about consumer behaviour. So these are general, uh, these are general assumptions which uh, economists make. Obviously, these are not all going to be correct all of the time, but they're assumptions which, in general, economists can make about consumers' uh, behaviour. So the first of these is that consumers are rational and that they act rationally. And what we mean by this is that they will choose the cheaper option if they're offered two similar goods at different prices. So, for example, if you had um, a pair of runners and they were uh, white with a black design and they cost one cost 60 euro and one which looked very very similar cost 30 euro the assumption is that the consumer would decide to choose the pair for 30 euro the second assumption made is that consumers will attempt to get as much benefit as possible from their limited resources so by limited resources what we mean is the typically the amount of money or finances that they have and what we mean by try to get as much benefit as possible from these limited resources is that consumers will typically stretch their money as far as they can so if they have um, 1,000 euro to spend that month typically they will stretch that 1,000 euro across their rent their bills um, their shopping and if they have money left over they might put it into savings so they will really try to get as much benefit as possible from the limited amount of resources that they have the third assumption which is made about consumers is that Consumers must make choices to get the most out of their limited resources. Unfortunately, most consumers, um, as we said, do have limited resources. And this requires them to make choices between different products that they, um, that they might make. Sorry, that they uh, might like to buy products or services. Because they can't have it all. Because we have limited resources. Okay, So if you have 100 euro to buy... Um, a pair of runners and there's a pair for 80 euro and another pair that you like for 60 euro unfortunately you can't buy both of them because you only have 100 euro so you have to make the choice as to which pair of runners to buy the third one is that or sorry the fourth one is that the benefit a consumer gets from consuming a good naturally reduces over time and the this is called the law of diminishing marginal utility, okay? And an example here is that once you buy a new iPhone, you really enjoy using it for the first while, um, but then two years later, you don't enjoy using it as much as you first did because it has slowed down or maybe there's a crack on the screen or there's a new iPhone that has came onto the market. So over time, the amount of benefit or enjoyment that you got from consuming and using that iPhone has diminished so this is an example of the law of diminishing marginal utility okay so this topic of supply and demand is centered around the influence that it will have on price because the price that consumers are charged for goods and services in a certain market will depend on supply and demand Supply and demand aren't the only factors which influence price, but they are two dominant factors. So the first one is supply. And supply is the quantity or amount of a product that suppliers are willing to sell at different prices. Okay, So it's the quantity or amount of a product 
that suppliers are willing to sell at different prices and demand then is the quantity or amount of a product that consumers are willing to buy at different prices. And the influence that supply and demand have on price will be seen later on in this video. So the law of demand is all about the influence that demand has on the price of a good or a service. And specifically, the law of demand states that or is the idea that as the price of a good or service increases, the quantity demanded will decrease. So as the price of a good or service increases, the uh, quantity demanded will decrease. And similarly, as the price of a good or service decreases, the quantity demanded increases. So we have a couple of examples to show this. So in the first example, it says, if the price of a pair of jeans increases by 40 euro, the quantity demanded decreases. And this is because people only have a certain amount of money to spend on things that they want. So if you had a pair of jeans in mind that cost 50 euro and you walked into the shop and all of a sudden what you were expecting to uh, cost you 50 euro was actually costing you 90 euro, the chances are that you would not buy those jeans anymore. And so you wouldn't be alone in making that decision. And therefore you can say that in general, the quantity demanded for those jeans has decreased because the rational thing for consumers to do is to not want to buy that product anymore. And the second example is that if those pair of jeans had decreased, decreased by 40 euro, well then the quantity demanded will increase because this means that more consumers will be able to afford the jeans. So, for example, if you walked into a shop and you still had your 50 euro to spend on jeans and when you walked in, you saw that those jeans were actually only 10 euro. The chances are you might even buy more than one pair of those jeans. You might buy two or three pairs and someone who walked into the shop with 20 or 30 euro to spend on jeans and couldn't afford the pair of jeans maybe that you were originally after can now actually afford those jeans. So they might also buy those jeans. And that means that the quantity of those jeans, which is demanded by consumers, has increased because more consumers want to buy those jeans now because more consumers are able to afford those jeans. So what we have here is called a demand curve. And a demand curve is a graph which we can use to show the expected demand for a product at the different price levels. And in general, what we will see is that the demand curve shows that the higher the price, the lower the demand for um, the product. So for example, we can see here that when the price of this certain product was 10 euro or $10, sorry, we can see that the quantity demanded was about a thousand people. Whereas when the price of this product was $4, the quantity demanded for this product was in and around two and a half thousand people. So as the price increased for this product, the quantity demanded decreased. So what we see here are called demand curve shifts. 
And what demand curve shifts show is the influence that external factors, so factors which are not price, have on the demand of a product. Because although price is the main factor which, influenced, which influences demand, it's important to remember that price is not the only factor that influences demand. There are other factors which can influence demand. And we can see these by looking at these demand curve shifts. So what, what can happen is that we can have demand curve shifts to the right or to the left. A demand curve shift to the right, this shows that demand has increased. So if we look over at our diagram here, we can see that the price for this particular product has not changed, okay? So for each of these lines here that we see, the price has not changed for any of those. So each of these lines represents an external factor, something else which has changed the demand for this product. And as we can see here, the more the lines move to the right, the more that the demand for this product has increased, okay? So demand is increasing along here. Whereas if we were to work the opposite way, as the lines move towards the left, this makes demand decrease. So what we can say here is that from line D1 to D3, we can call this an inward shift and an inward shift of demand means that less is demanded um, at each market price. Whereas from D1 to D2, we call that an outward shift. And an outward shift is that more is demanded at each price. So something has happened in the market which makes more people want to buy it. And that factor is nothing to do with price. And we'll speak more about this in a later video. But for now, if you can just get your head around the external factors which might have an influence on price, that's enough for today. Okay, so thanks a million for tuning into today's video. Hopefully it improved your knowledge on today's topic of supply and demand, and in particular, the law of demand. So today's learning intentions were to be able to describe different assumptions that economists have about consumers. And we looked at four of them. We said we would differentiate between supply and demand, and we now know the difference between those two. We said we would understand what is meant by the law of demand, and we now know that. And we said we would explain what a demand curve is and understand the impacts of shifts in a demand curve. And we know that they represent either an increase or a decrease in the demand for a product. So thanks a million for tuning into exam revision today and into this video. Make sure to stay up to date with all our social medias for more information and have a nice day.